Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. Happy holidays everyone. We're counting down the 12 days of boa mess where I show you a different locality boa from my collection that I'm lucky to work with over the next 12 days. And we've reached day eight. And for day eight, we have a very distinctive type of locality boa. That is the Pearl Island boa, boa constrictor sobogay or boa imperator sobogay if you prefer. And these are one of the most distinctive types of boas. In fact, they're so different from the rest of the boa constrictor group that they were originally classified in a separate genus, the genus Epicrides, along with the rainbow boas. They were reclassified as a subspecies of boa constrictor uh, around the middle of the 20th century. Um, and they're now, with you know, the current revision of boa constrictor to many forms of boa constrictor imperator to a full species, uh, a lot of people think of them as a subspecies of boa imperator, boa imperator, so bogey. So one of the most distinctive characteristics is that they're very elongated. They're definitely the most slender boa, which is maybe one of the reasons why they were thought of as Epicrides, and they are definitely adapted to a life in the trees. They also have a very unique head shape. They have this very long triangular shaped head with these flared nostrils, very prominent eyes, which are often golden or orangish in color, quite striking looking. And then the uh, body is pretty much patternless. So they, they have uh, just a very, very faint traces of saddles in many cases. And they have this beautiful golden tan color, often with the beautiful iridescence. So this female shows a lot of white on her side. So my animals, most of them have these white sides. We're in a really cool look. Uh, this is a female who's almost nine years old. This is a female bred by Rich Isle from the Salmon Boa. And she's a proven breeder. She bred twice for me already with her latest litter was born just this year in 2021. And so one characteristic of these Pearl Island boas is they're behaviorally, they're definitely a lot more active than most boas. So they don't like to sit still. They're always moving around, trying to get away. They can be aggressive. And in fact, this female is really calm now, but in the first few years I had her, she drew blood on multiple occasions. She's just calmed down over time. Um, and now she's pretty chill, as you can see. They also, they move around a lot. They need larger cages than you know, most boas their size. And they also need something to climb because they live in trees. And they're more restless. This female has actually escaped on me. I uh, have to admit she's escaped on me a couple times, including a few years ago. She was actually out for over a month and I still don't know where she went. I looked everywhere for her. Luckily she returned and was in, you know, decent shape. And now I have, you know, extra locks on her cage, you know, to prevent any future escapes. But, you know, definitely a more active type of boa. Uh, size is about, you know, pretty much a medium-sized boa. I think this female is probably about seven feet. You know, she's not as thick as most boas that would be seven feet, though, because she's more slender. But just a really cool, distinctive-looking boa, you know, for the locality collector that wants something a little bit different. This is one of my holdback babies. This is a male that was born here in uh, 2019. And the female I just showed you is the mother of this animal. I paired her up with a uh, Vin Russo bred uh, uh, male that I have and produced this litter in 2019. And just a gorgeous looking animal. You know, I found that my captive bred ones born here tend to be a little bit less nippy than the ones, the other ones that I've had, you know, that I got from other people. Um, you can see the beauty of this guy. These are some of the most beautiful baby boas. They almost look too perfect to be real. Uh, you, know, you can see the lack of the saddles and the beautiful light sides. I also love the tails on these guys because typically they have saddles in the tail and they're this beautiful reddish brown kind of burnt umber. I don't know if that's the actual color but just a really beautiful coloration and they almost glow with this orangey brownish color. You can see this guy his head Really cool shaped head, very distinctive. And you can see how long and narrow and slender this guy is. This guy is probably about three and a half feet long. Uh, you can see, definitely adapted for our life in the trees. So the Pearl Island boas are kind of unique because they're from an island uh, called the Pearl Islands. It's in the Gulf of Panama. It's actually in the Pacific Ocean. Most of the island boas we have, like the Crawkey Hog Island, 
Cocker Key. They come from islands in the Caribbean, which, you know, of course is part of the Atlantic. But this is one from, you know, the Pacific, which I think is kind of cool. If you look at a map of Central America, you'll see that there's numerous small islands, like hundreds of these small islands. And I would imagine a lot of them have boas that, you know, haven't really been described yet by science. We know that like the Cocker Key and the Qual Key, um, Hog Island, you know, these are some examples that have been described, but I wonder about the riches of boa biodiversity that exists in these islands. Unfortunately, we probably will never know because it's unlikely that we'll have, uh, you know, an expedition going there to document them. But, you know, it's something as a boa aficionado that I can always, you know, think about. So right now I have uh, a pairing going on, you know, hopefully we'll have some babies later this year. And, you know, these are some of the earliest boas born. I had a litter uh, in 2021 that was born in May, which is one of my earliest litters. Most of my boas typically don't start getting born until like July-ish. And this is, um, the, the pairing I have right now is the pair from, they came from Vin Russo. So, you know, hopefully we'll have some babies. But really cool boa, not for everyone. You know, they're probably not the best pet boa because of their temperament being sometimes a little nippy and they usually don't, you know, sit still a lot. But, you know, you can see this guy is pretty cooperative. Uh, he's not trying to get away. And just, you know, gorgeous animal. Definitely looks different from the other boas. So it shows you all of the great things that locality boas have to offer. So I hope you enjoyed this look at the Pearl Island boa for day eight of Boamus. Shoot me any questions you might have. Thanks for watching and Merry Boamus.